Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Natalie and today I'm going to be showing you some of the outfits that I will be bringing to Burning Man this year. Stay tuned. This is the first time I've ever filmed standing in this room, so I'm hoping the tripod doesn't shake. Also, if I keep looking back at my face in the recording, I actually have the camera facing me this time, so I apologize if I do that. It's mainly so that I can see if I'm showing you guys the clothes properly. So yeah, now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. When I was preparing for my first burn, I noticed that there were a couple videos on clothes that people brought, but there weren't too many. And I think the main reason for that is you really can't go wrong <laughs> with what you wear at Burning Man. I mean, there are people who wear all sorts of stuff and there are people who wear absolutely nothing. There's really no right or wrong as long as you're comfortable and taking care of yourself. So if it's freezing outside, maybe have some warm layers. You know, you're gonna probably wanna bring a coat that you could be comfortable in in 40 degree to even 30 degree weather if you're gonna be out late at night. And you know, you'll want some lighter clothes, maybe some bathing suit stuff for if it gets really hot but you don't feel comfortable being naked. There is no need for you to go out and spend money on getting clothes for Burning Man. If anything, I would say, you know, whatever you have in your wardrobe already, if you don't care too much about it, if there's a way that you can cut it and alter it and make it more you, more unique, more jazzed up, that would be a good way to go. Last year, I did a lot of stuff like that where I just cut up old t-shirts that I had or I brought bathing suits or I brought things that I found at Salvation Army for five bucks. So keep in mind that I've been to a lot more Burning Man type events since I went last year. I've also camped with other people at other regionals. I'm a part of a camp. We do other fun type of events. So I've accumulated a lot more clothes this year. And I will say most of them are from websites like I Heart Raves or Buffalo Exchange, which is a thrift store chain. So the, the stuff that I am gonna show you guys really isn't like too expensive. If anything, like I think most of what I'm gonna show you is under 15 bucks with the exception of a few bits and pieces. And some stuff has been repurposed, like things I already owned for years and now they're my Burning Man clothes. I just wanted to make this video for fun. I just wanted to kind of show you guys some fun stuff that I'm planning on bringing. Honestly, probably not gonna bring everything that's in this box. Oh, I should show you this box. Oh my God, it's huge. Ah, this is the box. <laughs> and I should say, that's not all my clothes. That is definitely half my clothes half my boyfriend's clothes. And it's not even all Burning Man stuff. It's actually a lot of camping gear, some of my boyfriend's fishing gear. So that's not all Burning Man clothes. I'm not crazy, but there's definitely a fair amount in there that's pretty wacky and could be worn to a festival or a rave. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you guys are accessories. This one is pretty obvious. You need goggles. You don't necessarily have to have goggles that are this freaking big. I mean, like, these are huge. These are like the size of my face almost. So you don't necessarily need goggles that are this big. These were just ski goggles that I already owned and they don't really fit me. So we repurposed them for Burning Man and they work out pretty well. Also, you're gonna need dust masks, but I personally found that I liked to use bandanas last year. I will still be bringing paper dust masks, but having a bandana can be a fun little accessory. And honestly, you never know when you're gonna need it. It's good to have. I personally like these ones that you can just slide over your face like a little scrunchy turtleneck. You can also scrunch it up, wear it around your wrist. If you're sick of having it around your neck, you can do that. So there's a bunch of different ways to wear this one or you can just use a regular bandana. Okay, in terms of fun accessories, I went to Buffalo Exchange last year and was just kind of looking for some funky stuff. I found this for like, I think it was five bucks. I don't really like it. I shouldn't have gotten it, but the idea that I have is, actually, let me see if I can find what I wanna show you guys. When I found this, I knew that I wanted to kind of have like an animal style 
flower crown. And I found this on Amazon and I freaking love this. Like who's here? Okay, I'm back. That was the mailman. I have a really sweet mailman who likes to deliver mail personally to me if he sees that my car is in the driveway, especially if I have a package. He doesn't like leaving it by the door, so he always gets out of his truck and he delivers it to me, so that's really nice. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, I bought this thinking that I could cut some of the flowers and leaves off and super glue it on here. I still think I'm gonna try to do that. I just keep forgetting and I didn't remember to do that until we were leaving for the burn last year. So I just brought these and I wore them two or three times throughout the week. You can also accessorize in a lot of fun ways with sunglasses. I got all of these from Buffalo Exchange. These are actually my boyfriend's. I think they're so retro, so 70s, really cool. These ones are like lips. I feel very much like the Rolling Stones in these ones. They're a little big on me, but they're fun. And then this one is crazy. Oh, what? Oh my God. This is perfect for like a really mild dust storm where you don't quite feel like wearing goggles, but you also really don't want dust in your eyes. It's just gonna stop some, some light dust. If you're in a heavy dust storm, you need the goggles, but. This just feels very robotic and cyber, cybery to me. It's cool. You also need lights. I'm not gonna talk too much about that. I think I mentioned that in my Burning Man Tips for Virgins video. But I got these gloves a long time ago. I don't know if you can tell. It's showing up when I'm looking at it, but there's different light settings on these gloves and they're super dirty. <laughs> um, they're kind of gross. They've been used multiple times now, but they're really great. You kind of want to wear gloves a lot of the time at Burning Man because the dust starts to dry out your hands and wear down your cuticles. So it's really nice to have a pair that light up and are really funky and fun. Also, going along with accessories, a hat is a really good option. This is my boyfriend's hat. It is not mine, but I kind of love it. We got it at the gas station uh, on the way to the burn. Not the gas station. We got it at a gas station. There are many gas stations when you're driving somewhere far away. But... Yeah, it's nice because it has this string. So if a windstorm comes, whoop, there it goes. You're fine. You didn't lose your hat. So getting a hat like this is good. I think he got this for like nine bucks. It was super cheap. It's got some mesh material right there. So it's pretty breathable. And yeah, I kind of wish I'd gotten one for myself. This is a hat that I owned <laughs> in middle school and for some reason saved it. And it's now become one of my Burning Man staple hats. It's just so warm. It's like from Hollister. I really truly don't even know why I own it. Um, I am from somewhere where it's really cold, but I don't even remember getting this as a kid. So this must've been like a gift from someone. And I don't think I like ever wore it as a kid. And then for some reason, my parents just held on to it with a multitude of other random clothes. And when I went home, I saw it. And I was like, this would be great for the playa. So I just put some duct tape over the uh, little Hollister logo and now it's a Burning Man hat. Oh, also I have this hat. I forgot I have this hat now. I love it. It's a little bit more like a skull cap, but when I was at Bequinox this year, a lady was walking around and handing out little hats that she made for everyone and they were all little different patterns. And it's just, I love that it's pink leopard print. I mean, it's great. And yeah, that was a great gift. So definitely we'll be bringing this. And with my coat, my coat has a really thick hood, so I don't necessarily need that big thick hat underneath. A skull cap like this is kind of perfect. And then my boyfriend can wear the hat because he actually really likes wearing that uh, Hollister hat that I showed you. It's kind of annoying to keep saying my boyfriend repeatedly, but I haven't asked if I can say his name. I'm sure he'd be fine with it, but I'm just gonna keep saying my boyfriend. I'm sorry if that's obnoxious, but that's, I'm just trying to be respectful. Oh, also I forgot I have these hats from a bat mitzvah when I was like 12. They light up, uh, there's no battery in them. Oh no, there is a battery in them right now. Oh my God, is it gonna show up on camera? Let's see. Ah, ha, ha, there it is. Oh my God, yeah. So this is pretty awesome. We definitely didn't use these last year, so I don't think we'll be bringing them, but I can't, 
I can't bring myself to throw them away. Like what if one day someone's like, hey, anybody have any like green or yellow accessories and I brought these and I can give them to someone? Or what if I meet someone on the playa who doesn't have lights, I can give these to them as gifts. So yeah, I just think they're hilarious. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. What else, what else, what else? Onesies can be a really great thing to bring to the burn. They're gonna keep you warm. And if you don't necessarily have a thick winter type coat and you don't wanna go out and buy one, you could kind of just get away with wearing some layers or some fleece long underwear under a onesie. The only con about a onesie is peeing in the porta potties, especially if you're a girl, is a lot harder in a onesie. So keep that in mind. I did it last year, but I was also sober most of the time. So if you're planning on not being sober, onesies will be difficult. This is an Elmo onesie. This is not mine. <laughs> oh wait, there's no, why did I think there were eyes on it? I guess it just has Elmo right there and it's all red. Okay, now I wanna show you guys a couple of coats, things that what I would wear at night to keep myself warm. So the first coat I want to show you is this. It is purple leopard print. It's very Lisa Frank. I like it a lot. The only thing is it only buttons up to here. So if you want like your neck to be protected, that's not really going to happen with this coat. The flaps don't really want to stay closed. And that was kind of not something I loved about it. Also, it's like a torso length. And I like it, but I don't love it. The reason I got it was it was $5 at Salvation Army and I needed a coat. I didn't really have one. Now I wanna show you guys the coat that I do wear. I got this for Bequinox, which is a regional here in Los Angeles. And I love this coat so much. I will say this is the most, by far, the most expensive thing in this entire box of goods. It is a super thick, oh, fake fur coat by Spirit Hoods. And if you look into like camping rave type clothes at all, you might have heard of Spirit Hoods. They make a lot of hats and coats and all sorts of fun fake fur type stuff. This is the coat in Wolverine. And I love it. It's just, where are the pockets? <laughs> where are the pockets? Oh yeah, the pockets are always further back than I think they are. But this is the coat in all of its glory. And it's just way longer and way cozier than the purple one. The purple one is nice and all, but if it actually is cold out, it's not gonna do that much for you. This one, this one's gonna keep you warm. So I love this coat a lot. I wore this at the winter regional and it kept me perfectly warm. Definitely was an investment. Definitely took me almost a year to decide to buy it. I think I literally sat on it and kept changing my mind, kept changing coat ideas, tried to save money, wouldn't buy it. I think it was around $190 or $180. I might be wrong. There are some on their website that are less and some that are more. But just look how beautiful that is. Yeah, it was definitely an investment and it's really nice quality, really thick, definitely gonna keep you warm. So if you wanna splurge on something, that's a place you can go check out. You don't have to though. You can also get $5 coats at Salvo. Okay, now we're gonna get into the fun clothes. So <laughs> this isn't something that's necessarily useful but it's so fun. I got this at Dolls Kill when it was on sale. I should stress that. I don't know how much it costs now, but I got it for like 20 something dollars. I know now it costs more or at least when it was on the website, they bumped up the price again. It is a mesh rainbow duster and it goes all the way down to the floor. And this thing is so much fun, just like, the way I wore it recently, I was just wearing it with like a sports bra underneath and some shorts. You can wear it however you want. You can wear as little or as much as you want underneath this. I just think it's so much fun. There isn't really much of a point to it other than it just being really, really fun. 
something that might be a good idea, especially if you're a woman, men can absolutely do this too. I just know this would be more comfortable for women. Body suits are a really great thing to bring. I saw a lot of people out there in bathing suits as well. So if you already own a bunch of bathing suits that you love and you don't really feel like spending 10, 15, 20 bucks on a bodysuit, you don't have to. You can just wear your bathing suit. That works perfectly fine. I personally just don't own a lot of bathing suits. I'm not really much of a beach goer. So for me, getting a bodysuit wasn't a big deal. Plus I already owned this one from dance classes. I used to dance a lot. So this was something I owned from ballet. This one I got from I Heart Raves. <laughs> it is very <laughs> revealing. You can crisscross it in the front to make it less revealing. I'll see if I can show you guys. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a try on of this because it's a little scandalous. But my plan is to wear this with a high-waisted black flowy skirt. So yeah, it's just super fun. It's super flattering and comfortable. This is a bodysuit with long sleeves and it's got a zipper. I actually wore this in dance classes growing up. So you can zip it all the way down there if you want, but that's a little bit too much for me. So I normally make it just like a slightly deep V. Got the three quarter length sleeve there. And this is really nice to wear at night under some leggings or under a skirt. Or if it's for some reason not that hot out, you could also wear this, but it'll probably be too hot for me to really get a lot of use out of this. But what's, who's this by? I don't even remember. Oh, it's by Natalie Dancewear. How funny. Okay. Well, there you go. I made it. One thing that I love to wear is booty shorts or biker shorts. I think I'm kind of steering in the direction of liking biker shorts more and more. I just really enjoy that they cover my thighs and prevent chub rub. Is that okay to say on YouTube? I don't know. I recently got these at H&M and they were just super loose and soft and comfortable and they're cheetah print. I, I feel like you might be sensing a theme here. I've had a lot of animal print type things. I just love animal print and these biker shorts. I'm definitely going to be wearing these at the barn. I also have some other athletic type shorts. These are Nike shorts from when I ran track in high school. I just held on to them for years for weird little events like this. So these work great. And these are super comfortable. I think I also just own these from doing like yoga classes and dance classes and stuff. These are by Title IX. I don't know. Super, super soft, super stretchy. You want things that are going to be comfortable and breathable and allow you to move and climb things. Like don't wear jeans, don't wear restrictive stuff because you are gonna wanna climb things. I mean, unless jeans are really who you are to your core, like denim is your spirit animal, then go for it, do you. But I personally like to be comfortable. You're also gonna want a good pair of pants for the nighttime. It can get cold out there. Sometimes it's really, really hot in the daytime and it's not as cold at night. Other years it's been really, really cold, so Definitely just have an option in case the temperatures drop because you can always take clothes off, but you can't put more clothes on if you don't have more clothes to put on or heavy layers to put on. These are just some <laughs> cheetah print <laughs> leggings. They're super shiny. I got these at Doll's Kill with a credit that I had. I think they were like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. I hope I, I don't think I would pay more for these, to be honest. These are super comfy. I wore these at Bequinox and wearing a pair of long underwear underneath them kept my legs super warm. And it was cold at Bequinox, like freezing temperatures, you know, winter desert, like in the 30s, potentially even in the 20s with wind chill. So it was definitely cold. And yeah, they just have a nice material that seems to trap heat in pretty well. So get yourself a good pair of leggings or pants or sweatpants or whatever you want to wear. Obviously, you're going to want to bring things like sports bras, bikini tops. If you're a guy, just some t-shirts. If you're a girl, just some t-shirts. I do like wearing some shirts. I'm not going to show you guys my sports bras that I wear because they're really nothing special. They're just a couple comfy sports bras that I wear in my regular life that I got from Target and they're cute and I'll bring them to the burn because they're comfortable, but they're not really something I feel like showing on YouTube. This is a shirt that I got years ago. For the longest time, it was just a pajama shirt. It's just super loose and flowy. 
and it says happy on it. So this is kind of one of my lounge shirts. I wore this pretty much every morning in camp last year when it would start to heat up because they got short sleeves on them. It's super, super long and flowy and breezy and just a nice shirt to have on when you don't feel like dealing with the hassle of putting on a crazy outfit or a bodysuit. You're gonna wanna have stuff like this that's comfortable, that's good in the heat of the day, or if it's cold at night, you can just throw a sweatshirt over top of it. This was really nice. And this is a shirt that I would wear in the evening time. Again, I wore this at the Equinox. It's just a tie-dye shirt, a really, 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 really big tie-dye shirt. The sleeves are like super long, but I love this. I love tie-dye, I love blue and pink and bright, bright colors, and it went really well with my purple cheetah leggings. I also have this skirt. This I got from I Heart Raves. I will probably show this on with one of the bodysuits to give you guys an idea. There's like a flap in front and it splits at each leg and it's sheer and it's sexy and it's high-waisted. And if you're someone like me and you don't necessarily feel comfortable wearing bodysuits on their own it can be nice to have something like a skirt to make you feel a little bit more comfortable me personally i just don't like revealing too much skin but wearing a skirt like this just makes me feel a little bit more like me and it also makes me feel like this crazy badass with this super flowy sexy skirt on so i really liked this and it was sheer it doesn't really make you hotter and if the wind's going it blows like crazy so keep that in mind <laughs> One of the last things I can think of to show you guys isn't mine. It's my boyfriend's. He has not worn it yet. We got it at a Buffalo Exchange here in LA. <laughs> you can find some crazy things at thrift stores, guys, especially Buffalo Exchange. It is a silver jumpsuit with a sheer, well, not even, it's like a sheer iridescent cape attached to the back of it. And it's attached to the sleeves too. So it's like a flying squirrel cape and it's iridescent. It is the trippiest suit ever. And he got it because I really wanted him to get it. <laughs> it was between this and like some really crazy jacket that he didn't need and this was cheaper. And I was like, please, this is, it. he looks really good at it. So my goal is to get him to wear it at the burn, even if it's only for like a couple hours. All right, I think that is it for all of the clothes I'm bringing to the burn this year. I, like I said, I'm probably not gonna bring every single thing that I showed you guys. And obviously I'm gonna be bringing things like thick winter type socks for the evening, light socks for the daytime. I'm gonna make sure that my socks come up to my ankle for my boots. I would show you my shoes, but they're all down in the garage, packed away in camping gear stuff because they're dirty and I need to clean them. So. They're nothing special. I got them at Buffalo Exchange for like $14. So if you're sensing a theme here, it's that you really shouldn't spend too much money on this type of stuff. Again, shouldn't, shouldn't is relative. If you, if this is like something that you've been waiting for your whole life and you're so excited to and you really want to spend the money on clothes, go for it. But there's a lot of things that you could spend your money on for the burn that will actually improve your quality of life while you're there or maybe provide a gift to the community. You can honestly do so much just being creative and cutting up t-shirts like I did last year or finding really interesting finds at Salvation Army. So there's no need to spend a ton of money. If you want to, totally go for it. There's nothing wrong with doing that either. This is just some stuff that I have accumulated over the course of about a year and some change now. And yeah, I just wanted to share it with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you'd like to see more stuff like this down in the comments below. And please subscribe if you want to. Until next time, stay golden.